Today I have the pleasure of speaking with John Contact from West Red Lake Gold. How are you today, John? I'm well, Tracy. How are you? I'm very good. Your stock moved up 27% last week on no news. Do you think investors are looking at gold again, John? Well, uh, of course, we're happy to see the move in our, uh, in our stock. Um, you know, does it look like, the question would become, I think, to some extent, does it look like 2016 again, you know, when the uh, gold peaked at $1,900 in 2011, and then, you know, we went into a bear market in the gold sector, including the juniors, and it kind of turned around in 2016. And I'm, let me, act, uh, uh, you know, answer that on a macro level and then related to the junior sector. On the macro level, I think the price of uh, gold in New York right now is being sort of... Uh, determined by the Federal Reserve policy. They've been increasing interest rates by 25 basis points. And, you know, uh, that's created a strong U.S. dollar and, and a weakness in the gold sector. Um, you know, but there's only so many interest rate hikes ahead. You know, for every 1% uh, on the T-bill is 220, uh, 220 billion dollars of interest, uh, given that the U.S. is now 22 trillion dollars of debt. Uh, at the national level alone. So, you know, uh, regardless of what's happened last week, you know, I think the, the macro picture is in place for a positive gold sector, and we think that's the case uh, for the next uh, extended period of time. Now, on the junior level, junior exploration and developers like us, you know, we're getting $13 uh, an ounce in the ground in our market cap based on our resource estimate at the Rowan Mine. And these things are going to get revalued at some point. Um, you know, historically, they'll get 10 times what they're getting right now uh, per ounce in the ground. So we think there's a positive uh, uh, you know, situation ahead in the precious metal sector, including gold exploration and development companies like ourselves. And we're happy with ha what happened last week, and we think there's more of that ahead. So Investor Intel audience members out there, we have a bit of a buzz going on with a belief that some of the cannabis cash will be redirected into gold here shortly. And we've asked John because, of course, West Red Lake is in one of the richest gold deposit areas in the world, correct? Well, yeah, just to remind your listeners, uh, we have the West Red Lake project. Uh, it's 3,100 hectares on the west side of the Red Lake Gold District. We have 12 kilometers of strike length on the Pipestone Bay St. Paul deformation zone. Uh, the regional uh, gold bearing uh, structure that has uh, made the Red Lake Gold District a high gray gold district that's produced 30 million ounces over time. Uh, on the uh, West Red Lake project, there's three former mines. Uh, we have the Mount Jamie mine and the Red Summit mine. We own 100%. And on the Rowan mine, which is the most developed portion of our property, we own 60% uh, and operate in Gold Corp, one of the largest gold producers in the world that was founded in Red Lake, Ontario, has 40% and they fund their 40%. Uh, we have a resource estimate at the Rowan mine property. Uh, it's 1.1 million ounces, graded at 7.6 uh, grams per ton. And we're, uh, it's all within about 500 meters of surface. And we're, uh, we're doing scoping studies to show uh, the economics of a certain portion of that deposit. And we've started the permitting uh, process as well, baseline environmental uh, water studies, et cetera. So, you know, I think one of the key things to remember with our company is that we have an experienced management team. Uh, Tom Meredith, my partner, and I, we've done this before in gold exploration and development in Ontario. Uh, we've sold companies for as much as a couple hundred million dollars to uh, Canadian gold uh, producers, and that's what we intend to do with this property in Red Lake, Ontario. Well, you referenced your JV deal with Gold Corps, and uh, you're currently working out a surface exploration program. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's happening with that? Because I know a lot of shareholders are watching this closely. Yeah, as they should. You know, it's great to be partnered with one of the gold, uh, major gold producers of the world. You know, Gold Corp was founded in Red Lake, Ontario, and they produced as much as a million ounces uh, in Red Lake uh, at a certain time. So what Gold Corp uh, is wanting to do is find other gold deposits in Red Lake, Ontario, where they have this infrastructure and workforce and mills with capacity, et cetera. Now, as we uh, news released uh, on September 19th, they've been active on the property through the summer and are still on the property. They've been mapping and sampling and, uh, and remain on the property. And then they'll need some time to analyze the results. But we're looking forward, you know, at the management committee level of the joint venture to discuss these uh, activities and, and their an analysis of the results and Gold Corp has a lot of technical ability in this uh, area as one can imagine. With a real belief that a lot of investors are going to be looking at gold this fall, I was reading about your uh, exploration potential 500 meters uh, with your previous drilling uh, news release that came out earlier this summer. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, related to investors moving into the uh, gold sector this fall, uh, I've already talked about you know the revaluation of the ounces in the ground. 
Another thing that will you know, contribute to the market cap of a junior explorer and developer like South, it, it, ourselves is to add more ounces. Now, our resource of 1.1 million ounces is all within 500 meters of surface. Uh, what we did in the spring, a news release in July, is go below that 500 meters from surface. Now, there's mining in Red Lake down to 2,000 meters. So we're exploring the mineralized envelope between 500 meters from surface and 1,000 meters of surface. Uh, and the results we've uh, news released in July su uh, supported the theory that the, the mineralization is, 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 is the type that you would expect if you to host gold deposits. So so we're going to continue to drill that in time and endeavor to expand the resource estimate from 1.1 million ounces to some, some number higher than that, add ounces to our balance sheet as ounces get revalued from $13 to higher number than that. That shows up in the market capitalization and that's what the shareholders should be looking at. So John, I, I expect perhaps uh, results from this this fall. Is this what we as shareholders should anticipate? We have a lot of things to do on the property. We have you know, three former mines, and now Gold Corp, as I mentioned, is busy, busy uh, with their surface uh, activities. So we're going to take a look at this uh, with Gold Corp, and we'll be announcing in the fall what our next move is. But it's going to be adding ounces, uh, as I said, uh, looking forward to the revaluation of ounces. And, um, and, at, and, and making the ounces more valuable by doing the scoping studies and the permitting. Because what Tom and I have done in the past is shown uh, the Canadian gold mining industry that we have a deposit that has value. And by that way, uh, the, our shareholders get upgraded to more senior paper in, in a Canadian gold pro producer and can lay off the positions as they see fit. This is an exit strategy that we've done before successfully. Past assets of ours are now owned by McEwen Mining and Osisco Mining. So these are the type of companies that have recognized the value we build in the Canadian gold exploration business uh, in Timmins, Ontario, and now in Red Lake, Ontario. And we feel comfortable we can do that again uh, for our shareholders. Well, John, thank you so much for giving us such an excellent opportunity. It's good to see you. My pleasure, Tracy. Always good to see you.